Hello, everybody. Today's guest is a TikTok sensation, an Omega superstar, and she is unafraid to speak her truth. Australia's most iconic fairy trans princess, Bambi Fairy. Hello. <laughs> oh my God, thank you for coming on here with me. Of course, of course. On the other side of the world, but I'm here. <laughs> it tripped me out the fact that today is Monday for me and it's Tuesday for you. Yeah, right? it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday at like afternoon and it's like... And it's Monday yeah. like evening. <laughs> It's like that. I literally have been telling everyone like, oh my God, that's crazy. Like, yeah. I don't know. It tripped me out. I'm so excited. We've had, for those of you listening, we've had major technical issues, but we are here and we're ready to kill it. I'm so excited for this. We have never video chatted or even other than Instagram DMs back and forth, but we've like known each other, I guess, ish for kind of a, a minute. It's been like... Mm -hmm. I think maybe a year. I feel like I tried to look today and it was like around a year. Yeah. I found you through Lila, I'm pretty sure, a while ago. And then I just like... Okay. I, yeah, I was like, girl, I'm following her. She's amazing. I Aww, love her. So you're so cute. Yeah, Lila's been my trans soul sister throughout this journey. I feel like, though, the social media, like, trans community is so... Everyone knows each other. Do you feel like that? Mm -hmm. Like, she, I... I feel like yeah Lila and I were even talking when she was on the podcast and she was like we literally need to throw like a party just for like the trans social media people because we literally all know each other and we're like just killing it it's iconic I'm obsessed yeah. I think that like TikTok really boosted that I feel like I didn't know half of the girls before TikTok and then everyone just came out of nowhere and it was like I only I knew you and Lila and like then like the bigger trans like right you know I'm a, yeah go. you are really good friends with AJ Clementine who's another like yeah so cute I love you both you guys are so I you guys are like just such an unproblematic iconic duo it's pretty hot it's pretty hard to get into drama in Melbourne Australia is not like it's not like it's not drama. like <laughs> it's not like, there's no like we just hang out with like ourselves there's no like crazy yeah. parties drama like it's nothing yeah it's pretty chill which is good when you want like a really good connection and like long-lasting friendship 100 like, percent. yeah i can get messy in a way what is it like being like trans in australia I've, i guess i've always wondered because obviously I'm, i've only experienced it living here is it yeah accepted is it not really accepted in the it's, middle um, it still is in the middle like we're still like we only legalized gay marriage like not too long ago but it's like i don't know australians are pretty like they're pretty chill like i went out at the start of my transition like pre-transition wearing makeup and looking very like how old were you when you transitioned that. um i was 17. okay Similar. Yeah. I, that's when but, I like well, fully started hormones and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like 16 turning 17. And then when I turned 17, I like came out. And then after I was 18, 19, that's when I started my hormones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. Like it's, it's such a mix. Like it's coming such a long way. I feel like for safety reasons, Australia is pretty safe. We're not like a super dangerous country. Like trans girls aren't being trigger warning, but trans girls aren't being murdered or being harmed as a, as high as it is in LA. Yeah. Um, we're not getting guns pulled on us because guns are not legalized. So that um, helps um, just a little bit. Um, and, <laughs> you know, Go back like to the you... podcast with Lila. <laughs> she spills that oh. story. Girl, that was, it's just like putting, imagine like a transphobe getting to have a weapon like that to use against you. It's so scary. I'm so happy that we don't have that in Australia, but handguns, anything like that, like never seen one in my life, never, like, don't know. I mean, I've never seen one in my life either, but. Oh, you know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not like running around with, uh, just like chilling with people with guns. <laughs> But that's crazy. I mean, I'm sure it'd be a lot less of an issue here if that was the okay. case here. Oh, well. of course. It just doesn't make sense to, like, give people access to guns, like, for yeah. no reason. I don't, I don't get it. I just think that it's 
crazy and it's very scary and we see the things that happen in America right. from it. Like, no, exactly. Yeah. It's had like fun nightlife. Yeah, like the nightlife is um is really cool. A lot of people like to go to the Gold Coast and go to Queensland. They say it's like the LA, like Queensland is like the LA of um, Australia. But yeah, nightlife is Australians love to drink, which is a thing they always say. Like Australians day. drink a lot. It's really bad. Like is it legal to smoke weed? Um, no, not yet. There is medicinal like purposes, yeah. but it's not like legal, like legal. Okay. legal. Um, oh. but obviously the drinking age starts at, at 18. So that's why we that's all right drink time. very young. It's good. But for safety reasons and for being trans in Australia, it is good. I've never had an issue. I've never been physically assaulted. There are people, of course, that might make comments or might be um, rude, but I've never had a confrontation like ever in Melbourne in the city. So. That sounds like the life. <laughs> I don't know that I can do the same thing about myself here, but... Listen, I've never had a gun pulled on me, so I guess I'm, I'm killing it in, in that uh, in that way. <laughs> Do you have, like, fun going out stories? I, so when I was 18, when I first transitioned, the year that you get legalized, you, like, go out. Like, it's, like, the yeah. whole year I was going out when I was 18, going crazy, first transitioned. Like, it was, yeah, a whole year of just, like... Going to gay clubs, going to the street clubs. It was, um, I personally don't go like, crazy. I've, I've never taken drugs. Okay. <laughs> TMI. Does that like include smoking weed? I guess you, it does. Have, you obviously don't have to say if you don't, if you don't want to, but. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, no, I have, I have tried weed like a few times, but I've never like consistently. Just not your thing. But yeah, for me, when I say drugs, like I don't really see weed as much as a drug. Like personally, yeah. I like more party drugs. I feel like if I was getting into the party drugs, that's when I would like acid, it. Molly. I've been around friends like who are doing it, and like watching them was like enough, like to entertain. Yeah. But like, um, so I was always the responsible one. Like I was like trying to take care of them. So I was. I've scared. never, I've never done drugs other than I was. Uh, <laughs> I've tried like a roofie before, but that wasn't really by my choice. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's about as far as my drug experience goes. Um, a man may have slipped a little something into my drink. <laughs> but you live and you learn. <laughs> Nothing bad happened other than I got roofied. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like as well, this big opportunity to have really cool stories in like the LA scene because like you feel like there's a lot of people going back to like celebrities houses or rappers mansions like that kind of thing happens yeah and, like, we don't have that culture here like where there's big names in the clubs or where there's like celebrities going out or influences in clubs to have like crazy stories about like we this is like no yeah it's nothing exciting like that <laughs> yeah no I get it I I mean I've lived in LA for three years mm-hmm. maybe a little I don't know if it's a little longer or a little less, um, but I grew up in like Chicago, like a suburb outside of it though. So I was still pretty new coming here into all of the like craziness. And I have friends who grew up in LA and that were just like, oh yeah, when I was 14, Tyga tried to fuck me. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I think, I think Tyga tries to fuck everybody at this point, if I'm honest. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're not only- wrong. <laughs> I I can't get sued for saying that. No. Sorry, sweetie. Try and send me that fucking lawsuit, babe. That Zoom call will not be answered. No, (laughs) sweetie. That phone call will be put down. (laughs) Well, that's fun. How old are you? Um, I'm 22 now since last month. I'm 22. Oh, my God. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. Oh, I think I did say to you happy birthday. I feel like I remember. No, you did. You did. I hope I did. If I didn't, then happy belated <laughs> birthday shit. I'm like exposing myself. <laughs> Here's like a question that I want to start asking people on this podcast because I think it's kind of interesting. If you had three wishes, what would they be? Like right now, like... Mm-hmm. Wow, I wish you asked me that like um, a few years ago <laughs> before transitioning. <laughs> that would have been a lot easier. Um, yeah, I mean, I the things that I always wish for is like for myself, like what I really want is to like obviously grow 
my platforms. Like that sort yeah. of one. I really want to like have more of a voice that can reach more people, which is like at the moment it's slowly getting there. But I, that's my main thing. The other ones are just like really self-centered. Like I want to just, um, <laughs> I like, I want to be famous. I want to be rich and you know, she wants to be fig she still likes being a fig girl it's um it's fine <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. um i really want to get into music that's like what i've always Cute. Been. Um, yeah i've always before well, like when i started school i was like straight into music straight into choir straight into everything i um you sing always, yeah oh my god um, that's awesome i had no idea yeah i haven't like been working Vocal about it, it. So long. like yeah i yeah no every time i record myself singing i i delete that i'm like mm -mm, no oh my god <laughs> wait so exciting yeah thank you i just um yeah you just get into this zone where you're like no i have to like keep up with my socials right now and focus on that so then like i can have more of a following so when i'm ready to release music like it'll be there kind of thing right it's always like that battle of like do i pursue this and put that over this and it's like it's a mess but like i really um do need to get back into just like <laughs> oh sorry my phone should be on do not disturb and it wasn't and i'm a horrible human being and i'm gonna go kill myself yeah Keep it's like, on. like we, we had problems with balls and we needed that we yeah needed you're that. like getting deep right now i'm just sitting here like instagram sexting me <laughs> cool <Hey>. fuck <laughs> all right continue <laughs> I just don't want to be famous for no reason to be like oh you got a platform because you're pretty like okay cool like give me substance like give me something yeah. like, I want to share a story or like yeah I want so to you're a much better person than I am if someone were to give me five million followers and just be like because you're pretty I'd be like thank you I accept <laughs> Look, <it's laughs> I will fulfill this position if you want me to stand in this corner and just pose I will babe I will <laughs> She's ready. <laughs> Write me that check. <laughs> That's awesome. I the music thing is something that I like was not expecting, but it's so cool. I will be looking out for that. Your TikToks are hilarious. Is that your main platform right now? Do you do YouTube? I was pursuing YouTube for like a year. Mm -hmm. Um and it just wasn't growing. Like I don't know if you found that as well. Yeah. It just wasn't taking you anywhere. It wasn't giving like smaller people a platform to like be. Yeah. Um, so I was posting videos for like a year and they were not like blowing up. Like nothing was really doing well. It was like, getting like a few thousand, which is okay for some people, but it was right. so, much editing, so much time to only get like a few thousand views. It's like not worth it. I did it for like two years maybe and I had a few like anytime I had surgery like yeah of course I'm getting 50,000 views 100,000 views because you're watching me have screws taken out of my head like yeah people are watching that but like for the most part yeah I'm getting one two maybe three thousand views and I feel like that like I feel like YouTube is um a platform that's like changing a lot right now which is why like the video version of this podcast is on YouTube which is exciting because I feel like that's kind of where it's going. At least that's the kind of content that I watch now on YouTube is mostly like podcasts and certain creators. Oh, yeah. But I do yeah. feel like I don't know, like I wasn't growing a whole lot off of YouTube. I mean, there are some core people that like will DM me being like, I feel like, where are your YouTube videos? But yeah. TikTok's algorithm is insane. Exactly. TikTok is my main platform, but it is just so it can be up and down at times. And like TikTok can really just like, one day it'll blow you up and the next day you won't even like reach like 10,000 views on a video and you're like, what is going on? Like, I'm so confused. I have um, a love-hate relationship with TikTok. Exactly. It's good and it's like really boosted everything. Like even for my best friend, AJ, it's really boosted her. Like she's... Yeah, great. she's killing it right now. Yeah, and it's led to so many opportunities, and um, yeah, so it's amazing. But yeah, TikTok and Instagram is what I'm, I focus on. Awesome, that's so exciting. And your TikToks are fucking hilarious. Thank I will. You. They're so good. First of all, your Omegle videos, which if anyone listening, I'm sure you guys all know what Omegle is, but basically it's an online chat room that has like video features. Although I think you can do just the chat, but you basically just video chat with like a bunch of strangers and they're always <laughs> weird and they're all, i mean like there are a few sweet i actually 
<laughs> this is so embarrassing. I had like an Omegle relationship. Like not actually, but this is how I first, AJ and I started following each other. And this is around the time when you and I started following each other. I posted an Omegle video that was kind of like inspired by her video. And I went uh, up. Yes. Yes. And when I was filming that video, this like, hot European guy pops up onto my screen. He's sitting there, he's DJing. And all of a sudden he's like, are you a lady boy? And I, I know like your first thought is like, oh my God, this like asshole, fuck him. Mm -hmm. But in his defense, in Thailand, that is a thing that it's like the actual word that you use for people. And he had just got like gotten back from Thailand. I end okay. up having a two hour long conversation, two hours while I'm recording, like this whole thing is recorded. Like he is sitting there, we start flirting. He's like, we exchange WhatsApps. I have to download WhatsApp just to talk to him because I had no idea what WhatsApp oh was. And just, it was the weirdest thing. I talked to him for like a week afterwards. I was literally like wanting him to fly me out to, I think he was in London. Where okay, was yeah. he? Somewhere in Europe. And he was like, let's see each other. And he was a DJ. And we met on Omegle. <laughs> I haven't heard from him since. If you're listening but like, what was, now. He, what was he doing with the lady boys in Thailand? But that's what I want to know. <laughs> oh, he was into it. Like, sorry. Like, he was into it. Like, it was his vibe. And like, honestly, normally that would really turn me off. Like, I'd be like, ew, gross, not talking to you. But when I tell you he was so hot and he was like, he was so sweet. Minus the time he called me a lady boy. I did tell him, I was like, that's definitely not what you're supposed to say. And he was like, oh shit, really? And he was, he was like, all right, I won't. Oh my there's, God. Always, there's always one really hot European guy on a Michael that's like into like, doesn't care about like trans guys. And you see him often? Or you no, like, but one time. I'm saying in general, whenever you always go on, there's always like some hot European guy. Oh. Like, in every time. Oh my God, really? Is this a thing? Did I get like catfish? Is it like a human trafficking thing? Because that would happen to me. I, <laughs> I mean, I mean, if it's like, <laughs> let me check through my recordings and if we're talking to the same oh my guy. God. Like, oh my God. <laughs> I have his, I have his nudes. Um, that he did send me on WhatsApp that I can also send to you for uh, just to make sure whether or not he's a human. For like parent. educational purposes? Educational purposes. I'm literally trying to see if I can get onto WhatsApp to see if I can find his photo. Although I guess I probably shouldn't <laughs> put that. His name is Thomas. It just popped up. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Thomas, if you're listening, hey, dude, what's good? Um... I'm a little different now. I've had quite a few more surgeries since actually, no, I've only had one surgery since we've, since we've talked because I do remember I was wearing like this huge push up bra. It was a moment. I'm getting so off topic now thinking about him. Um, Thomas, I love you. I miss you. What's at me? <laughs> What's good? It's a true love. Sorry, I'm here for it. <laughs> Imagine he's really Skrillex or some shit. Like, he's Marshmallow, and this whole time I just, like, had no idea. I would live for that. Obviously, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, he's probably some, like, famous DJ. And you're just like, I oh. hope so. And he was just chilling on Omegle. Watch, he was recording me, too. I'm, like, somewhere on the internet, like, can you imagine? And he's, like... This lady boy is trying to flirt with me, thinking that <laughs> thinking that it's a vibe, and I'm just trying to DJ because I'm fucking Skrillex. Oh my <laughs> I remember your um, I remember that video. Me and AJ both saw it. Um, yes, it was around the time that was like starting, like coming out as trans on Omegle was like. Yeah. Oh, it was such a thing, and I remember making sure because I remember thinking about it and then looking it up and then seeing her video and being like, oh, I like this girl. Like she seems really funny and crediting her, not even because it was the first one that I saw, but because I wanted her to like tag her in it. <laughs> like I remember um, being like, I'm gonna tag like her and then obviously I met you. Yeah. So I remember, I remember her and I filmed one together. Like, oh really? It was, it was the second one she posted and it was like pretending to be trans twins on her makeup. I don't know, it was just Oh crazy, my God, but... cute. I mean, it's a vibe, like it's really, and it's, it definitely has now become a thing, Omegle has mm -hmm. like blown up because of this. Yeah. And apparently no, it's like a huge human trafficking thing. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that people like stealing people's locations off like 
or make a little, like you can check people's IP addresses. Like, so you have to be careful. Um, but I don't think any of them are going to find me all the way in Australia. So. <laughs> yeah, I remember like being like 11 and um, talking to this guy from like Sri Lanka. Like he, oh. I remember being like, like this is going to sound, actually, I, that's going to sound like a scandal waiting to happen. So I'll skip to that part. <laughs> Yeah, I um I found out about Omegle for the first time when I was around the same age. It was like two of my friends um were like, Oh my god, we went on this website and like there was like guys on there and they were like yeah. me. and I was like obviously not out as and I like, I didn't know my like I was coming to terms that I liked a man. I didn't know that I was trans, I didn't know what I was, but I yeah. was like I was like, but nobody knew it was like a secret, and they were, and I was like, really? Like, oh, that's gross. But I'm like, but what's the website? What's the app? Like, I need to know right now. Yes. And, then, and then that night, I went on it, and it was like, it was, it was everything. Like, sorry, like not even gonna lie. Like, I used to go on that shit. My parents would go, like, we're going to run groceries. Go grab yes. groceries, sweetie. And I'd be like, okay, bye. See you later. Yes. Text me when you're on the way home. And then I'd like, yes. go, and go, and I'm like, oh, God. Hey boys, like I'm a girl. I promise, I'm not an yes. boy. I used to wear a um. Do you remember like the trend of like the onesie pajamas that you could like um button up and it had like yeah. a hood? It was like a one piece. Yeah, so I would wear that and I would put like two pillows in the onesie and then I would like just be like that. And then my friend would come over and we would um he had us go on it and she'd sit there because she was like yes and they'd be like oh and then they'd see me like just the top half and i'd be like in this like lilo and stitch like little onesie like that lilo and stitch yes i know exactly what you're talking about that's amazing literally and i I lived my life and now i have just advanced that and now i make ermigal videos is where i debate with people you do and they go in they try you like you found some crazy people i get really annoyed because like i was filming one the other day and every time I tried to get into a conversation, they were just skipping me. And I'm like, debate with me. Like, I want you to fight. Like, yeah. let me know how you You're feel. Like, like, yeah, I um, I love it because I think it people feel like they're safe when they're talking behind a screen. 100%. And like, so I like to know what they feel so I can, like, actually show people, guys, like, this is what people feel, even though these people don't, might not say it in real life. I so mean, especially being a trans person with a platform, even I have a much smaller platform. I don't really have, like, a crazy platform, and I get quite a bit of hate. So it's, mm-hmm. like, at a certain point, you're used to... And even just people in our, like, regular lives, you're we're used to people, like, not accepting who we are, that it when you're seeing someone behind a computer screen like attacking you I'm sure at a certain point you're like I'm used to this shit like come up with something new bitch exactly I am used to it like you said and um yeah and I like I don't know I I like her I like having those conversations I like talking about it and I like hearing what they have to say and like I think I'm I'm just so numb to it now. I've heard everything, like, no matter what you say, if it's, like, to do with, like, you don't like trans people because this, this, and this, like, baby, I've heard it before. I've heard it all my life. I've heard it from my dad. I've heard everything. Um, So I'm ready to talk about it, like, debate with yeah. me. <laughs> I know you just mentioned um, your dad, and I feel like you've made TikToks about this. Has, yes. I have. has your family been supportive, not supportive? Um. Yeah, so my older brother is um, gay, he's a gay man. Um, That's so crazy. Like, yeah, so he's gay, I'm trans, a little like LGBT moment. <laughs> he's Are you like guys five close? Years. Um, we weren't for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, he moved out of home when he was 15 and like. 15? Um, yeah, when he was 15. So I was only 10 because we're five years apart. So okay. like. We didn't talk for a while, and then now we are close again. Um, as we're a bit older, like he's twenty six, I'm twenty. Yeah, I'm twenty two. He's twenty seven. Yeah. So it's kind of like we're a bit closer in age. Um, but yeah, he was always obviously very accepting because you know he was right. like knows about it. Um, my mom was like the whole thing is my family didn't have education about trans people, so like my Mum, like, wasn't transphobic, but she didn't know what trans was or right. anything about it. 
like help me or to like understand and um same with all my family pretty much my dad knew about it my dad was very like I always say that my mom was the accepting one but she didn't have the education to like help me and my dad did have the education to help me if he wanted to but he was not accepting so I like it was like I was stuck like I'm like well, I can't the, the parent I want to go to can't help me really in a way right. so yeah my dad just wasn't accepting of um are your parents and, together no, no no they um they divorced when I was 14 okay so yeah I still saw my dad I saw him like once a month and we would like go on a little day and have lunch or do something cute mm-hmm. like once a month but when I came out as trans when I was 17 um yeah he just couldn't handle it and he was really nasty so I had to like cut him off I just have to say yeah. like if you can't accept me I can't have you in my life and yeah. I made a video about this but we hadn't spoken since I was 18 and then now like four years later he just sent me an email this year um just saying the same thing again he's like uh i've seen your facebook um and like you need to reverse what you're doing right now and he wants to see me as his son and he like started the email calling me like my dead name and he's like um you know like you need to reverse what you're doing before it's too late and i want to see you as my son it's like i don't know it was just crazy yeah. so i didn't that's respond hard. that's hard um, yeah, I mean, I, I hadn't spoken to him in four years and I, right. yeah. You're I just, like, what's the point of like coming here now to say the same stuff? Like you obviously, you know what I mean? It's just like, what's the point? And he's seeing like how far along I am in my transition, obviously. Right. He's stalking me. Um, At that like, point, you're just like, either don't speak to me if you don't accept it or, or let it go. Cause you are yeah, my- like, I was just like, what do you want me to do? So you want me to just like stop everything I'm doing right now because you told me to be a boy. <laughs> like, right. like, like, your head in the, but you're like, oh shit, yeah. thank you for sending me this email. I'm going to go, I'm going to go shave my head and just stop the hormones tomorrow. Exactly. Like, babe, yeah. you're too, like, you're like way too late. Like, don't yeah. Literally. And, um, yeah. I just was like, the fact that someone is like, nearly gonna be 60 like he's like in the late 50s range and you're still you've been on this earth for like 58 years and you're still that kind of person it really shows that some people right. like cannot grow and cannot evolve um, especially regarding your child I get it completely i have had family members who like will post videos on facebook being like destroying transgenderism like ben shapiro shit and it's just like, fuck you. Like, you used to bring me on vacations and I used to see you every weekend and now you're posting this, like, like cousins like that are close in age that I grew up with and aunts and uncles. So I get what you're saying. I'm definitely a huge person to be like, one day maybe hopefully people will get to that realization, like, I fucked up. Like, this person is a human being, but not everyone changes and that's really shitty my dad literally with covid wears a like trans flag mask like he's like more out and proud than i think i ever will be he (laughs) takes it to another level that's beautiful that's amazing it is um, that's so cool on a lighter note you are someone who wears fabulous wigs and (laughs) I used to be a wig connoisseur back in the day. Yeah. Um, I lived for a good wig, but I've also had some kind of embarrassing moments. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if you had any like fun, funny or embarrassing moments wearing wigs. I think like we all have had one, <laughs> at least one. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> when I first, uh, yeah, when I first came out, I like had my um, my colorful wigs when I had like a brunette wig, which was like my when I want to go out, just looking your really every cute. day, <laughs> your uh huh, serving yeah. fantasy realness exactly. And what people don't understand is like when you're a little bit bigger too, and you have like really really short hair, it just like at the start of my transition, I just looked so I just hated the way it looked. Like I was like. I, I just didn't, with that. It didn't, exactly. So I was like, first of all, the struggle of wearing a wig every time you need to leave the house was like, don't even talk about that. I went <laughs> through a bottle of got to be glue like a day. 
No, but babe, I wouldn't even glue mine. That's how like f- that's how over it I was. I would just exactly. clip her in, pop her on, right. and be like, "I'm proud." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The only crazy stories that I had with those wigs was just like situations when guys don't understand the concept of like not pulling your wig when you're kind of, you know, having a little fun um, and they just like pull, like, you know, your hairline's like slowly pulling back. Um, so that happened a few times and I would like be doing whatever and I'd be like holding the side of the wig just like that and just being like percent and they just like yank it and because I didn't glue it either. Oh yeah. my god. Has it ever come off completely? It was like probably like halfway down. Did and I just like happening or like what did you like get that you like afterwards be like, oh my God, my wig's at the back of my head or did you No, like I could I could feel it because like okay. I just like because it was clipped like here. So I could feel it just like pulling and I was oh, like trying uh, to hold it. My and, God. But it was in the dark in a car, so I mean. <laughs> um, so yeah. So, it was in the dark in a car. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I just quickly just went like, and. Um, oh, I've know. had those moments. Oh, I've had a moment where I like, it's going back and I'm like trying to pull it forward. And next thing I know, it's literally on my eyebrows. And they're just like, <laughs> you don't have a you forehead. Don't. What's going on, babe? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> I used to be a boy. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was lucky, but at the time I had full brunette hair underneath. So I think in the dark oh, car, yeah. it was moving like brunette and brunettes. So it was kind of okay because the like the wig cap was going back too. So at least it was like maybe in the yeah. dark it looked okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe. so. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe <laughs> oh, I've had a very similar situation. So I'm right there with you. I one time yeah. was hanging out with this guy. I've actually said this story on TikTok, but basically I was hanging out with this guy. His Snapchat username was Big Daddy Snake 69 So you've got oh. the picture of like who he is. You know what I mean? He, oh, okay. He's six foot five, I think probably blonde blue eyes played basketball i was maybe like an age that i shouldn't have been partaking in this um experience he he was like 25 28 okay he was 28 i'll be honest (laughs) he was he was 30 let's be honest (laughs) right literally i'm like he was actually 50 this is all a lie blonde hair blue eye played basketball very attractive. I met him at a, and this is like the trans girl. Like I feel like every girl who is every trans girl that transitioned at a younger age has these stories of like, you make some bad decisions. I met up with this guy and like an apartment complex's parking lot. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, she said like, like euphoria. She wanted a euphoria. Oh, this full jewels moment. I stole my parents' car. They went out. It was like a Friday night. They went out with their friends, drive to meet him. I get in his car. Like, horrible. Alyssa, what? Anyways, I meet up with him. At the time, I had just bought my first full lace human hair. My parents bought it for me. It was okay. fucking insane. Like... I thought I was such a bad bitch, but looking back, like wigs had just not developed in the way that they have now. And it just did not, like it was a lot of money, but it certainly did not look good. Yeah. And I remember wearing a baseball hat backwards to try and cover the lace to make it look real. Like, it's just embarrassing. Like what? Imagine me with like a gray baseball cap backwards. Backwards. Not even frontwards and not even like Kylie Jenner vibes. Like, no, she just backwards. Because because of the fact that I knew that we'd be getting down and dirty, and I wanted to keep the hat on. Babe, what? Girl, girl. It was that. Next thing I know, we're having a great time. I'm below the border. <laughs> if you if you get if you get the get the vibe that's when that's when like the wig situations always happen it's always down below always when the wig situations happen <laughs> and he goes, grabs my hat knocks it the fuck off and i'm like okay fine hat's gone 
you know, I glued her down. Like she's still glued down. Like I was prepared for this. It's clipped in, it's glued down. We're good. I, it's concealed. I still looked a mess. Again, he takes it to another level, grabs the back of the wig, and he yanks. And I literally grab the top of my head and I go up with his hand. And like, literally, as I'm down below, <laughs> as I'm in Australia. As you're down under. <laughs> I'm down under. And I'm, he's looking at me as I'm going up with his hand and he's just like, what the fuck? My response is literally, sweetie, this hair is Brazilian and it sure as fuck isn't mine. And he looks at me like with disgust. He's just like, who is this tranny freak that I am hooking up with? And someone get her out of here because this is not it. And obviously we continue to hook up and I actually never saw him again, but he did continue to message me. Big Daddy Snake 69, if you're out there as well. Big Daddy Snake 69 and Thomas from WhatsApp slash Omegle. If you're watching this, thanks for the man. If they've been if they've been messaging you, let us know. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Uh, Yeah, Big Daddy Snake, you're welcome for not reporting you to the police. I had did not know any better, but I swear to God, if you're fucking any young trannies. I will pull a Chris, no, not Chris Harrison. That's like the bachelor dude. What is it? Chris Harris? No. Who's the, the you know what I'm talking about? To Catch a Predator? Oh, um, Chris somebody. I'm, I have no clue. I didn't I know either. I was trying to make a funny joke. Sorry. My comedy career is dead. If he ruined that $800 wig, he would be behind bars right now. So. Oh my God. I would have literally cut off his dick. Like what? Do not fucking grab my wig. Did he know? Did he know? And also, like, you have to know that that's a wig. Like, I am sorry. As fishy as I thought I looked, bitch, there is no way you did not know. The the lace was showing. I do not care. You knew that was a wig. I don't know what you thought was going to happen. Unless he didn't, it was dark, I guess. I don't know, but like. Maybe he was like into pixie cuts and he was like, I'm over this moment and give me the. Right, literally. I don't even think I had a pixie cut. I literally think at the time. I had had a bow cut. (laughs) I had the top of my head was grown out to like here. And then the side was shaved. It was just not a look. It was like probably platinum blonde, but like fried. It was not bad. I, I remember that. I feel like you have photos in that. Like, oh, one hundred percent. It's not. Um, but yeah, mine was not an eight hundred dollar wig. Mine was from AliExpress. It's probably it was like blended. Um, yeah, blended human hair because I'm like I'm not spending eight hundred dollars on a brunette wig. Like I was not planning on staying brunette. Um, yeah. But I was like, and she's gonna get trashy in the back seat, so I'm not spending over like three hundred dollars on her. So. Oh, one hundred. I mean, listen, I had a fair share of like beauty supply store synthetic wigs that I killed it with. Do you want to talk about surgeries? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I was just sure. Why not? My favorite subject. I've um, had... Yeah. I, she's like, hi. She's like, I got the list. Um, I had my nose done like two years ago. And okay. yeah, and then I just, I've had my lips done twice. It's all I've had so far. So like... Oh my I, God. Are you serious? Only nose, like, because my nose was, like, this big, like, I had, like, a massive like, Italian nose. It was really, really big. Um, and, yeah, and then I just, like, get my lips done. But I really need, I really want to, like, um, Yeah, um, I loved my forehead surgery, thank God. Oh, I remember, I remember seeing your recovery. It was, like, insane, but... Yeah, so I, Lila and I were just talking about it because she got a little botched. Oh, her. girl, she is... Girl, I feel so bad for her. For her. I know. Like, I'm, like, I'm praying for her. Like, I'm just like, the photo is like. I know. Um, she fully, like, had the surgery, then two months later got jumped and someone was, like, bald. Like, and I, I think as well, like, the fact that she was putting, like, getting installs on top of the, the recovering hairline, it just did, it just messed it up. Like, you can't do that. You have to, like, let it be. Yeah. The fact that it got ripped out was, wasn't it because of the install? Because the glue was, like, there and they ripped it, for, like, they ripped off her wig, yeah. I think, I yeah, I think that, that the glue was what ripped it off, probably. I, I haven't actually... That's insane. Yeah. I'm, but she's killing it. She got, like, oh. I think it's called, I was about to say PCP injections. No, babe, she's not smoking PCP and, like, shoving it in her head. Um, <laughs> RP injections. RP, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. And that's yeah. what, like, hub hair growth and stuff. Hold up, let me grab my computer charger and my computer's dying. Yeah, I got out.
Your dress is amazing, by the way. Thank you. I think I have like Nordstrom. Oh, I wish I knew what that was. They don't have Nordstrom? No. Oh my God, really? I, I, I heard about it. Like I've heard about it in like Mean Girls. The what about like Bloomingdale's? <laughs> the, um, the, <laughs> Neiman Marcus? What? The, the only American French, like franchise that came over, um, you have a like, TJ Maxx, I think. Oh my God, TJ Maxx is the only yeah. one. And then, but it's not even called TJ; it's called TK. What? Like, the K. So it's called TJ Maxx, and that's that's the only thing we really have. You know. Wait. So, what are your like luxury department stores? Like, when you mean luxury, do you mean like the like the big name, and it has like all the levels of like different clothes, like that kind of thing? Yeah, like, the okay. only department stores we really have is Meyer and David Jones and like H&M, but that's not really... Oh, H&M, yeah. Well, that's very like European, like isn't that like... Yeah, like... that's, yeah. Browns. Browns? That's a, like that's, oh, well, I guess you're not, or you're not Europe, you're Australia. What the fuck is Browns? Browns, <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my God, that's crazy. So if you want to go to Off-White, you're having to go to Off-White. I don't even think we have an off-white store. No, we don't. We sell, they sell off-white in, um, oh, there's this one place, I think it actually might be from America. It's called, um, Barney's. where they sell, hmm? Barney's. <laughs> it's called, it's like one of those stores that just sell like streetwear and shoes and that, like that's where you'd get off-white at. Stadium goods? Um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh my God, this is so crazy. Do you watch the show Dynasty? It's on Netflix. I, yes. I, I haven't watched it there. Oh, I I'm like trying to pull like very Dynasty. That's like the intro oh. of this podcast is like playing off the fact that I think that I'm uh, a billion dollar oil heiress straight out of a Dynasty. <laughs> um, I love and it. my parents would say otherwise. <laughs> and I think that my credit card bill would also say otherwise. <laughs> I'm done. I isn't what's her name in it from um Victoria's Liz um, Gillies. I'm obsessed yes, with her. Every I love time I get that. really high, I try and like like encompass her and try and force <laughs> it into myself. I like literally I, um, just, like sit on the couch and get stoned out of my mind and just sit there and just be like, <laughs> I wish I was Liz Gillies. Like I'll rewatch yeah. interviews of her. It's not good. It's actually kind of scary. Oh, Liz Gillies, I, um, please be my friend. Please, me. <laughs> That's the only reason I was like tempted to watch it is because like her face is always like the main thing of it. I'm like, oh, okay. you need to but, watch like, it. Like, it's good. You need to watch it and then text me about it, and you're gonna you're gonna be blown away. It's fucking. I every person that I meet, I will literally like tell the homeless person on the street. I'll be like, I'll buy you a TV just so you can watch <laughs> Dynasty and tell them how it is. And they're all like, hey, but we just want. Like, and okay. like, coming yeah. here. Like, like I just look family, like no, like yeah. <laughs> I'm see or not. Um I'm I'm so random, I'm rewatching the Carrie Diaries. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I've watched them as random shows ever. Yes. Oh my god, I used to live for the Carrie Diaries. So I'm watching that at the moment, it's really cute and like don't tell AJ because she wanted us to rewatch it together, but I'm watching it by myself because I don't have time to wait for her. Sorry. I'm dead. They talk about like the club limelight a lot in there, right? Yeah, but yeah. There mm -hmm. used to be one in Chicago back when my mom was younger and she used to like when she was in high school, she'd like sneak out and go like clubbing at Limelight. And so I remember watching that and her being like, I used to go to Limelight too. And I was like, oh my God, my mom's so Cool. And then I'm like at the same age and she's not letting me leave the house. And I'm like, babe, hey, you are like, coming. Um, it doesn't add up. And little does she know I'm like stealing her car and going to fuck 30 year olds. Sorry, mom. I, what is the, like, wait, so what is the driving age in America? Because it's very different. Yeah. 16, you can get your license. That is not Here. normal. That's scary. Really? What is it? What is it in Australia? 16 is when you can get your learner's permit to like start being on like your own. 15 yeah. here. Really? No, so 16, you're on your learner's, and then when you turn 18, then you get your first P's, which is like, then you, it's like nearly a full license, but you can drive alone now. And then you, you're on that for like three years, then you get your green P's, and then you're on that for like a year or two, and then you have your full license. Oh my God. You can't, you can't start driving alone until you're 18 now. So I'm joking. And, 
We can't drink oh. either while we all drive. In yeah, and we can't drink until we're 21. I wonder which one I would prefer, like, to have, not be able to I drink. Think- and be able to drink. The driving would be better, but I feel like if I was driving around at six, like my full license at sixteen, like that would be insane. I mean, you could have been like me and driving around at fifteen in the middle of the night. <laughs> Without that any is, type of license. <laughs> that would be so weird to me if I saw sixteen-year-olds in Australia driving cars. Like, oh, there'd be so many accidents. Like, it would not. Yeah. Be I mean, I think there were a lot of accidents. I think there are a lot of accidents. There are. Like, babe, I can see them behind you. In the, in the oh, one million percent. <laughs> One million percent. I froze my mm-hmm. reproductive. Same, I did too. Stuff. Did too. There was issues with freezing everything, and it was like a oh. whole. Because I was tucking a lot, and so I just was kind of infertile at that point already. Oh. Oh. So I had to like go to thirty appointments, and then wow. I like literally went into the room my first appointment to like put it into the cup, and the person who was working there was like oh, sorry, well, you're, like, a boy, so all we have is straight porn. Or, like, only we only have naked women to look at. And I remember being, like, and he's, like, because you're a boy. Like, he said that to me, and I was, like... Wait, what? And, like, at this point, I was presenting full female. Like, I remember I had, like, blonde, platinum blonde bob, like, crop top, like, like little jean shorts. Like, I was not presenting as male whatsoever. And at this point, I think I was, like, looking pretty cute, too. Like, it wasn't even that I was, like, that wrecked looking. Yeah. And yeah, my mom went off on him. They like had to apologize. It was like a whole dilemma. Kind of traumatizing. What the heck? Are yeah, you yeah. paying um are you paying storage fees like right now? Yeah. We pay every, okay. I think we did like a bundle. And I have no idea. My parents are amazing. They pay for everything in my life. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, I, I remember doing that like when I was 18 before I started hormones and yeah. like um the lady there was like the, the the nurse whatever she was like so confused the fertility specialist she was like you're like the youngest patient I've had like coming in here to do this yeah this yeah this, yeah when I turn 22 you start having to pay the storage fee now so every six months I have to pay 250 dollars every six months for, for oh my god yeah Wait, so kind of uh, expensive Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, it's, like, 500 a year, pretty much. Oh, I guess it's not horrible. I guess it's, it's like, not too bad. Thinking about it's, it being paid every six months. I think we pay every five years. Okay. But I think it's, yeah. like, a, like, I think it's, like, a lump sum. Like, I think it's probably around the same amount. It was so long ago, and it was such a fever dream. I wanted to forget that experience. I was, like, I would do it, like... It was, like scary the only thing I, that I liked about it was I got out of school and I would like go get donuts afterwards at like my favorite donut shop like that's probably <laughs> the best thing that came out that's, of it I, um I remember I kind of like butched it up a little bit for the appointment because I was like hadn't started hormones yet anyway and so I was like okay I can go full glam and go do it or I was just like let me just, just go chill and, oh I fully should have full glam like I'm in a waiting room up. full of men I'm I, oh my god and then after the whole like male comment my mom got so pissed off that when the person came out into the waiting room in front of a whole group of people like I mean this is a big waiting room she gets yeah. up and she screams how dare you call my transgender daughter a boy she is not a boy in front of me like I'm sitting there like in front of 10 20 straight men and their significant others and they're all just staring and i'm just like oh okay like now i'm the freak <laughs> like this is fun oh, like i was God. already getting scared like me and my mom walking in to fucking females and they're just all like that's interesting and then of course that is crazy i was tra- like traumatized like i think that i i think a rapper could pull a gun on me and i would prefer that over having my mother uh, scream that i am a no, but also walking, walking out of the room afterwards you just feel like shame <laughs> like you're just like, shame. Like, uh, and then you and like i don't i can't remember if i had to leave it i think i let you leave it in did bed. you only do it once i had to go like eight times it was like an every week once a week thing for like two months once a week, no, no, no. I literally was infertile. Like, they were literally like, your fishies are twitching. They're like, they're not moving, bitch. And I, was like, I, I was like, 
oh, like, okay, like, cool, yeah. They would get, like, one fish a day. So I have enough for, like, half a kid right now. <laughs> no, I was overly fed all. I was oh, like, hey, well, there you go, bitch. I did not have that. Yeah, I did not I have that one. Have you ever seen what's happened to you when you haven't, when you've forgotten to take your estrogen? Have you noticed Oh, all the any? time I go crazy. Yeah, because, yeah, my, um, my best friend AJ forgot to put her patch on for, like, four hours, and she, like, fainted pretty much, like. Oh, my God. Oh, I've gone, like, days. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm a bitch. Like, you do not want to be, like, my friends are like, Alyssa, did you take your hormones? And I'm like, no, I did not. I haven't in a week. And they're like, that makes sense, because you literally just took a knife and slit my throat. And I'm like, oh, oops, did I? Like, I black out. Like, I fully, no, like... You think it's true, because, like, your body can't function without any hormones in the system, and, like... Like, people mean, think Trisha Paytas is bad. Like, bitch, I black out. Like, if I don't take my hormones, and I love this, <laughs> this is no shade to her, I just mean, like, peak crazy. Like, I'm crazy. Like, I will literally kill a bitch. Like, I have lost friends due to me not taking my hormones. Holy it's not crap. good. Like, I can be a cunt. <laughs> well, what about, before, what about before your surgery? Because you had to go off them for like a month. And I was a cunt. I was like, <laughs> everyone. Everyone can can visit you. Like, I'm so excited. You're like, don't fucking suit me. <laughs> like, I'm literally like, you are trash. I fucking hate you. Come visit me. And I hope your plane crashes on the way here. Like, and people are like, what? And I'm just like, I hope. You're you like, don't buy me flowers. Because if you think about it, like, I'll No, I'm you. like, I'm like, flowers no I, I expect to have a room full of like flowers chocolate everything like i like people were like okay bitch calm down <laughs> like you're doing too much everyone's gonna be like wow so Alyssa's a horrible person <laughs> I prom and like my friends too will be like you know when is this gonna not be an excuse anymore like now it's like we'll get into a fight and i'll be like sorry i just didn't take my hormones for a week and they're like <laughs> okay <laughs> Sure. Like at this like, point, at this point, you're choosing. To yeah, I like <laughs> am sleeping with all of my friends' boyfriends. Sorry, I didn't take my hormones. Yeah, like <laughs> they're like, you're just a bitch. <laughs> yeah, you're just a. Yeah. You're just an actually horrible human being. I've and, never gone off them for like more than a day, so I don't know. I don't know what I would. Happen. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm not good. I'm. I'm like a very. I'm. Yeah. <laughs> your bones can go really like weak or brittle if you don't get hormones like pumping through them so that's why like, you get really weak so girl interesting I'm just so frail and brittle like you can just break me in half wow I'm so petite <laughs> tiny oh my god <laughs> literally bro like I was like holy crap because like yeah. That Every is man scary. is like, babe, you're not brittle. You look like a whale. Bring it down a notch. <laughs> you're like, babe, you can look. <laughs> but um, maybe try patches then, because then you don't have to, like, keep remembering to take But then you have to, like, wear it, don't you? Like, you put it on your stomach, right? Yeah, it's like a clear patch, so it's fine. You don't really see it. But um, I swap it by a week, so it's like... Oh, you can shower with it on? I think it would bug me. <laughs> it's okay, like... If you're wearing, like, dark clothing, like, some of the fluff could, like, go around the edges. So it kind of, like... Yeah, I think it would like... bother me. I have, like, horrible insomnia, so I, like, smoke okay. 12 grams of weed a night just to try and get myself to fall asleep. <laughs> do, you, do you use melatonin as well? Does it work? There's a certain one you can get online from I heard. Like, some black market shit, like, wink, wink. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and that... Some black market as melatonin. As <laughs> That's the hardcore like, drug I use. It is. Like, and it knocks you out, so. Interesting. I always thought melatonin was just, like, a scam. The ones in the normal drugstores are, but the ones online... The black have, market like, shit is in. The black market shit that you can't get in store, they have, like, the right level. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I should maybe get on that because I am teetering on a weed addiction <laughs> babe kidding sorry not trying to joke about that but like but like also same also like yeah <laughs> that's crazy 
But yeah, when you're in public and people realize that you're trans, like it can have good reactions. Like some people are really sweet and they'll like take extra time to smile at you and like show that they kind of like, yeah, that they're accepting. And I like when that happens because I think it's a really like heartwarming experience. And, I'm like, so womanly, no one ever knows. No. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not actually trans. I've just this is a social experiment I've been doing. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, it's a social experiment. One person said I looked like a man, and I've just gone with it ever since. Exactly. (laughs) Oh my god! Thank you so much for being on this podcast. I've had the best time ever talking with you. I'm so happy, and thank you guys for tuning in to this week's episode. I will see you guys in next week's episode with some more fun, crazy gossip. (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye.